Hi guys, I'm here today to do a book recommendations video. I love doing these, I don't do them enough and I've been thinking about doing this one for the past couple of months and then I just had a look at my shelves last night and just thought, you know what, I have to do it, I have to talk about all these books because I bloody love them. So I'm here today to talk about books set in Britain in rural locations. So I'm going to focus on novels. I ha have read a few short story collections that fit the theme but not enough and I think I'm going to wait until I've read some more and then maybe do a separate video. So I have 12 novels to talk about. Before I start talking about them I just want to mention what I love about this theme so um, you can sort of hear that going in and bear that in mind when you hear me talk about all these books. So I have said many times, and apologies if you've watched for a while because you've heard me just go on about this, I am a reader who loves in-depth focus on characters, loads of character development, and also um, a slow plot and beautiful writing. And I think that books that are set in rural, isolated locations really offer that. And the other thing I think is wonderful about these books is I love lyrical descriptive writing and I think that most of us can agree that that is significantly more possible and more achievable and more evocative when you're writing about the natural world. Whatever part of the world you're writing about I think it's so much easier to have beautiful language attached to plants, animals, landscapes than it is to cities, architecture, you know, traffic, those sorts of things. You know, I'm sure there's beautiful books written in cities that I love and adore, but I think in general um, you're much more likely to get beautiful writing when it's set in a remote rural location. So just massive tick boxes for me. So I'm going to go on to these books and I'm going to talk about them briefly because I'll have spoke about lots of them in other videos and also, you know, I don't want this video to be super long. Apologies if I repeat myself a lot. When I do these videos where there's books of a similar theme, I may end up using the same word words a lot, so I will try not to do that. So the first one I'm going to mention is actually one of my favourite books of all time, and loads of these books are some of my favourite books. I think nearly all of them I gave four and a half or five stars to, so, you know, I love all these books. But this is one of my top, top, top books of all time, so we're starting on a high. This is How Green Was My Valley by Richard Llewellyn. This was published in 1939 and it follows um, the life of a family in a small Welsh um, mining village. And it is glorious. It's one of those books that is so heartbreaking yet incredibly warm. It's this working class family and their neighbours and how they all interact with one another and I cared so deeply for all of these people. And the writing about the valley they live in is perfection. It's so evocative. There's points where he writes about the landscape and I was in tears. Like, that is not easy to do. Like, usually when you cry it's because that something's happening with the characters. The fact that he can make me sob just reading about how much he loves his valley is just pure perfection. So please, please, please read this one because it is just mesmerising on every level. So the next few I have are set on farms. This one I guess you wouldn't necessarily call a farm. This is The Valley at the Centre of the World by Malachi Talek. So this is set on the island of Shetland and it focuses on a small valley again. Um, and it focuses on a few people who live in crofts and they look after sheep, so they're sheep farmers. And in particular we follow a man who is living in the croft that was left to his wife and she has left him. She's gone to live in town and um, she's left him there and he still lives very near her parents in the same valley. Um, there's a little map at the start which shows you all the houses in their valley, there's very few, about four or five, and all these characters um, know each other incredibly well and it's about him and how he isn't coping since she left him, it's about his loneliness, it's about some new people that move into the valley and the sort of conflict that comes with people who are from a town um, coming to the valley and his connection with his in-laws which is um, a really good relationship but also th this conflict there because they feel they should be loyal to their daughter. It is beautiful, it's quite, it's a very quiet book, not much happens at all and it has a sense of melancholy throughout but I just thought it was beautifully written and I really cared. I felt like if Malachi Talik wanted to write a series where we just follow all these people for years and they don't even do anything, like they just potter around, check on the sheep, have a little chat, have some afternoon tea, I'd read it because he can write and his 
characters are beautiful so there's that one and then these next couple are set on what we'd actually call farms um, that's the proof of love by Catherine Hall um, so this is set in or during the hottest summer on record in England which is 1976 I think this is beautiful this is about a young man who was a scholar at, I think Cambridge yes Cambridge and something's happened to Cambridge we don't know what and because of that he's left on his bicycle and he has arrived in a remote area in the Lake District that he doesn't know and he comes across a sheep farm and he asks for work and he starts to work for the father of the family and his brother and he becomes very close to the mother and their young daughter. This is an LGBT novel. I think that's, you know, that's not a spoiler. You, you realise that very early on. And a lot of this is a commentary on toxic masculinity, what it would be like to be a man like Stephen at the time, his connection with the mother and the young girl and how that's viewed. It's, it's very tragic. It is just, yeah, it's, it's also very warm. Again, I think all these books, while they may be quite slow and at times quite melancholy and, um, you know, have isolated characters, a lot of them have such good people in them and such warmth. And I think this is a perfect example of that. The next two are actually set in Suffolk, which is where I grew up. I now live in Norfolk, but I, I live like half an hour away. So um, I love that there's always this connection because, you know, I recognise the places they're talking about. So this is Midwinter by Fiona Melrose. This follows a father and son and their relationship. I'm going to tell you their names because they're glorious. They're called Landon and Vale Midwinter. I love those names. And this is about something in their past. So they lived in Zambia and the mother died there. Um, and there's a lot of history that they haven't spoken about to do with that. Um, they both blame one another and very early on in the novel the son is in an accident with his friend in which his friend is really injured and it was a very like stupid accident it didn't need to happen have I knocked my collar no I haven't and the fathers are very angry and it's about how they don't talk how they have all these unsaid things which are destroying their relationship but they just won't speak this is so such a sad novel because the father is quite a lot older and so you sense his age um, this is one of those books where I've read where you really sense the age of a character you can really feel the ache in his bones there's a scene in this that I'll always remember um, when they're driving along the road and they see a rabbit with myxomatosis and there's a discussion about what they should do with this rabbit and it's just devastating um, so if you're you know like I said if you have an aversion to reading about horrible things happening to animals this may not be for you but um it is an amazing book so the next one i've spoken about more recently um this is one of my favorite books of last year and that's all among the barley by melissa harrison and um, this is a historical fiction book that follows a young girl as she grows up on her family farm and a older woman in her 20s who's very beautiful and educated arrives in their in their village and wants to question everybody about their way of life and it turns out she's a journalist and she's romanticizing the rural life there's some elements of the young girl believing in witchcraft and that becomes a bit of a session for her and i thought that was tied in really beautifully um, to the natural world this is amazing and melissa harrison like if i had to say like choose a young writer now who's sort of you know early in her career who can write nature writing like amazingly melissa harrison is it the way she writes about the natural world is phenomenal and you can tell that the the knowledge she has about every single plant that ever existed in the uk like you can tell she has all that she truly knows what she's talking about so um yeah this is amazing and then i have another one of her books which i actually read quite recently um so we've, we've got our farm books now um this is at hawthorne time again by melissa harrison and this is set in a small village on the outskirts of london and it follows um several characters as an incident occurs at the start of the novel a car accident in which you think that one of these characters might not survive um, and the novel goes back in time and we start to follow these characters one of them are a couple um, who are, I think in their sort of 50s and they're unhappily married and they, they have recently moved out of London to live in this small village one is a um, 17 year old boy who um, has lived in the village his whole life and then one is a homeless man who um, travels through the countryside and um, works on farms and has been arrested quite a few times for trespassing and vagrancy and we follow this village through their eyes and the nuances of what it's like to live in a village like this you know we have the young 
the young boy character who knows the village and the landscape really well but feels sort of hemmed in by it and um, we have this couple and their conflict the wife loves being there and the husband doesn't they both feel like intruders and then we have this man who's being told he is an intruder but if anything he's the closest to the countryside because he sleeps in it every night and he knows all these hidden footpaths across the whole of england so it's really beautiful very very slow but i really enjoyed it and i definitely recommend it the next one i don't actually have a copy of but i absolutely loved and need to buy myself a copy of and that is elmer by fiona mosley i'm sure quite a few of you have heard of this one because it was long listed for the man booker a couple of years ago now i guess and it was her debut novel and she's very young so it became quite famous at the time because of that. This is about a young brother and sister who grow up with their father raising them and they live off the grid. So they don't go to school, they're informally educated by a woman their father knows and their father earns money through fighting so he goes to organised but illegal fights and people bet on him. There's lots of commentary in this novel about Margaret Thatcher's era and the privatisation of council houses and land and what that has done to people like this who choose to live on the margins, how it's made their way of life impossible. This book is glorious, I'll read anything she writes. Her nature writing is absolutely exquisite. It feels, and this is the same thing with Melissa Harrison, when people write nature writing so beautifully so that it feels magic. This next one is perhaps not as in keeping with the rest of the books because it's not quite as isolated, but it is still set in rural Britain and I really enjoyed it. And I feel like the characters in themselves become quite insular and isolated of their own making. That is English Animals by Laura Kay. I bloody love this book, it's so amazing. And in fact, I think I might go and reread it as soon as I've stopped filming this video because I love it that much. So this is set in rural Oxfordshire, I believe, and that's where the author's from, so I'm pretty sure that's the case. And this follows a young girl called Mirka who has um, moved to England from Slovakia and she's been working in London doing various temp jobs and she sees a job advertised to work at a house called Fairmont Hall in um, the countryside and she assumes that her job will be to be a nanny so she heads there and finds that actually they want her to be a taxidermy assistant and also to help with the, um, the wife to arrange um, weddings on their land and in their property and what you really follow is these three people they're amazing characters the married couple have a really dysfunctional marriage neither of them are like completely likeable but yet you still really like them as does Mirka um, and what makes this one so special for me was seeing England and a certain type of England so these are these people are old money I think this is all shown to a really illuminating degree through the eyes of somebody who isn't British. So Mirka recognises a lot of these oddities that are so normal to us and comments on them. Um, and throughout the course of the novel, um, more and more of these things happen and you, along with Mirka, are thinking, why do we do that? So it's not so rural in terms of lots of nature writing, but it's very rural in terms of the way they choose to live. I love this and I truly recommend it. It does have scenes of taxidermy, not for the squeamish, but you know, I think this is a phenomenal book and I love them and I love Mika, so read it. On the other end of the scale, we've gone from a book where people are uh, killing animals and stuffing them to people trying to save them. This is The Wolf Border by Sarah Hall. I couldn't do a video like this and not talk about Sarah Hall. This is set in the Lake District and we follow a woman called Rachel Kane who has come back from the US where she worked on a large reservation um, following uh, a group of wolves and tracking them for conservation reasons. She comes back to England because her mother is really ill and she is offered a job working for a lord who owns a very large area of land attached to sort of this hall and he um, offers her employment because he's decided to breed wolves in a secure fenced area in order to try and reintroduce them to the UK. Rachel takes on this job working on this reserve and there's always um, this conflict she has because she knows that really the government don't want to reintroduce wolves, nobody wants um, wolves roaming um, England um, or Scotland even and yeah this is just brilliant um, there's there is a focus on the world there's also a focus on the dynamics of her working for this lord and this class barrier um, she becomes really friendly with a man who is on the estate and a, a relationship develops which I really like watching unfold and this does become a little bit um, plot driven towards the end actually but I loved it and there's just scenes where you just watch like 
a weekend of her like in the house over Christmas where there's loads of snow and I just loved it I just think Sarah Hall can write all this stuff beautifully um, and the descriptions of the wolves is like absolutely fantastic so if you want to read books that have a strong natural element to them then then this is definitely it so try that one so this is the one I'd say has the most plot which is quite ludicrous you know wolf border is probably tying with this one for most plot and that's night waking by Sarah Moss I couldn't not mention Sarah Moss either because when Sarah Moss does write about the natural world she does it to perfection. So this is set on a small Hebridean island in which the protagonist's husband owns a house and a large area of land and there's quite a lot of conflict there right from the get-go because um, her husband's family owned this land and took a lot of it from the people who would originally live, th live there. There's quite a lot of resentment you know to begin with. Um, they are there because her husband is studying the puffins um, and while he's off gallivanting around you know doing loads of work and absolutely nothing in the house or to care for his two small children our protagonist is trying to write a uh, thesis about um, mothering through the ages and childcare through the ages as well as to look after her two children and as well as that sort of family narrative there is a thread where quite early in the novel they find a skeleton in the garden and a police investigation begins as to um, where this skeleton is from. They realise really quickly the skeleton is very old um, and our protagonist finds some um, letters hidden in the house that may relate to this skeleton. So you're um, reading the present day story and then you're also reading these letters um, from the time period when the husband's family would have you know booted loads of people out of their small holdings it's exquisite i think i would recommend you don't read this if you're um a new mother particularly one who's struggling with sleep there's scenes in this book where she gets up in the night because her children aren't sleeping that my heart was in my throat. It's difficult to read. I loved this. It's beautifully written. Um, I loved the mystery that was happening. I, th I think even without the mystery, just their life on the island, um, the relationships they make with the people who live near them, and her relationship with her children is just beautiful. And I love Sarah Moss, and this is my favourite book by her. Um, and I don't say that lightly because I find it really hard to choose that this is my favourite, so please do read it if you haven't already. These last two I saved till the end because earlier I mentioned nature writing that touches on the magical, and um, these two don't just touch on it, there is sort of magical stuff going on in them. And I know that's not for everyone. I'd say these books are mainly rooted in reality, but there's just small elements of um, the, the mythology or fairy tale that bleed through and you know I would obviously massively recommend both of these as well. So the first one is Tears and the Prince of Crows. This is set in 1970s in a small village in Ireland and it follows a young girl who lives in a very religious family and her trying to break away from that. It's not very plot driven at all, it's quite long and it is glorious. The nature writing is exquisite, like honestly there's bits where she just describes like the moss in between the old stones in a wall outside a churchyard and I'm just like how does anyone like make me feel so much about some moss? It's <laughs> It's so beautiful. If you love books that really capture all the senses, when she describes food, you can smell it, you can feel it in your mouth. It's um, so sensual. Um, you know, she even describes the meeting um, chips at one point on the seaside, and you can feel like um, the like the sea breeze, and you can smell the salt and vinegar, and it just and feel like the oiliness on her fingers. It's just um, so perfectly evoked and. I loved it um, and there is some like weird stuff that happens with this um, to do with believing in like bird kings I'll say that but it's not it is a part of the storyline but I'd say in large part like 80 85 percent this book is realist and there's just this small element of oddness so I love this one and then lastly I absolutely really love this book and I want to reread this one as well. This is called Swan Song. This is set in the Scottish Highlands in contemporary times and it follows a young girl who's just left university and she's sort of hiding up there in a small house with her mother because something's happened at university she's trying to forget about. And when she's there she meets a much older man who lives a really isolated life because of a crime he supposedly committed many years ago that everybody knows about. 
and a relationship develops between the two of them and you sort of follow that and there is a fairy tale element to this as well. There's a lot of swearing, it's quite like a lot of people describe this as quite vulgar and the main character is not very likeable. I really liked her, I really liked all the swearing, I found all of this really relatable. I loved the romance, I loved all the descriptions and I just thought it was bloody beautiful so please read it. So those are all the books I'm going to talk about. Please, please, please feel free to recommend me more. I know I need to read Benjamin Myers, like he is my biggest why haven't I read him. I know. I need to read Benjamin Myers but please let me know um, more authors who I should be reading who write um, books like the ones I've just spoken about and let me know if you've read any of these, what you thought of them, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!